Hi guys, this is Sadek from Problem.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Evolution X ROM based on Android 16 onto Poco F6. So please check a backup of all the data on your phone and let's get started. First off, get the latest Android SDK platform tools from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You can do so anywhere you want. In my case, I've done that in C drive and as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Okay, just a second. And the files are as follows of the platform tools as you could see. Moving on. Please enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking onto your phone as well. The debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the phone's bootloader as well. So go to the settings menu. From the settings menu, you have to go to the about phone section, tap on OS version 7 times. This will enable dev options. So go to additional settings, dev options and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. Once that is done, you now have to unlock the phone's bootloader. So as of now, you might be on the HyperOS, that's quite obvious. So in that case, you, you can use the hyper exploit approach to get the job done. So let me show you. I have a video and a guide on that as well. You will have a look at my video and unlock the phone's bootloader using this exploit. Once that is done, please re-enable USB debugging once again onto your phone. Moving on, you will now have to download the ROM zip file and the boot DTB or recovery vendor boot. You could also flash the ROM via the recovery, the Orange Fox recovery, but we'll not be using that. We will not be using the Evolution X recovery only and not the Orange Fox. So please skip the Orange Fox for now. Use the ROM, the boot DTB or recovery and vendor boot. This is the direct link as well as you could see for our phone Marble Android 16. Boot DTB or recovery vendor boot and the ROM zip file. Get all the five files from here. Once you've got the files, transfer the files inside the folder of platform tools. Transfer all the files over here. So just give me a second. First of all, let's copy the IMG file, the, the partition IMG file, copy it and paste it here and remove any numbers if you have at the end. For example, let me remove the four from here and so on to make sense of the files. Just give me a second and this will also remove that underscore two and the DBO as well. And with this, we have got the partition files onto the folder of platform tools. Likewise, also copy the file, the ROM zip file and do a transfer inside the folder of platform tools. So now we have all the five files over here. Rename it to something shorter. So let's rename it to ROM and the name becomes ROM.zip. Now moving on, you will have to boot the phone to the fast boot mode. For that, open the CMD window inside the folder of platform tools over here. Type in CMD, hit enter. First of all, type in ADB devices and verify that you are having an ID. That's all well and good. Type in ADB, reboot, boot order. Hit the enter key. The phone will now boot into fast boot mode. This will take around four to five seconds at the very max. So let's wait for that to happen. And once it's in the fastboot mode, type in the command of fastboot devices and verify that you're having an ID. If you're not getting any ID, then please install the fastboot drivers onto your PC. We have made a guide and a video on the same. Have a look at my video and install the drivers. Likewise, right click on the window icon and choose device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and verify that your phone is being shown here. As you could see, Android interface. So this as well as the ID next to fastboot signify that you are in the fastboot mode and let's get started. So first of all, you have to flash the following five, the files of the partition file, the following four files, the boot, DTB, or vendor boot, and the recovery. Simply copy the command and paste the command in the CMD window. This will be quite an easy task. Paste it here. After that, we have to flash the DTBO as well. After the boot comes the DTBO. Paste it, hit enter. And then we have the vendor boot. So let's paste that as well. And finally, we have the recovery file, the evolution X recovery file. So let's flash that as well. I'm again repeating, we are not using the Orange Fox. We're using the USP recovery, which is the Evolution X recovery for this ROM. So once that is done, type in this command to reboot the phone to the recovery. So type in fastboot reboot recovery and hit the enter key. Your phone should now reboot into Orange Fox recovery. This will take around four to five seconds. So let's wait for that to happen. And then we'll flash the ROM zip file as well. So first and foremost, please flash the, please do a format data of your phone. So go to factory reset. Format data again, format data, and as you can now see, the data wipe is now done. So go back and go to apply update, apply from ADB, and the phone is down in the ADB sideboard mode. Let's verify that as well. Type in the command of ADB devices and verify that you are having an, the sideload keyword, as you could see in our case. If that's all well and good, type in the command ADB sideload file name, which is rom.zip, hit the enter key, and you might get a prompt on your phone. Let's see if that happens or not. So wait for a few more seconds. So guys, there will be no prompt whatsoever. The flashing will start and will reach the 100% mark without any prompt whatsoever. So that's all normal. On some phones, we might get a prompt that we have to tap on yes, but that's not the case with this ROM and this phone. So it's all well and good. And the flashing now about to reach 100% mark. 
so let's just wait for that to complete and after that okay you will now get this prompt if you want to flash any other zip file then tap on yes for example if you want to flash magisk or g or any other zip file of your choice then first tap on yes and then do an adb sideload of the required zip file in my case i don't want to flash any zip file as such so i will tap on no and once that is done it's recommended to do our formatting once again so to go to factory reset format data format data data wipe is now complete and now you may tap on reboot system now the phone will now go to the os but do keep in mind that the first booting up will take up some time that's all normal and nothing to worry about from the next time that will not happen so with that in mind let's just wait for the boot logo to appear that will signify flashing has been done successfully and the boot logo or the animation might appear in around 10 to 15 more seconds it's just for the one time and from the next time that will not happen moreover you could also obtain root on this rom by the kernel su i show that at the end of the video as well but first let's wait for the boot animation to appear and then we'll set up the rom and then have a look at the android 16 feature as well and as you could now see this is the boot animation so let's now wait for around 10 to 15 more seconds for the rom to boot to the setup screen and with this we are now inside the setup so let's get started as of now i'm skipping the initial setup process because i want to speed up the process of this rom if you want you may link your wifi link the google account and restore all the app data but for now i'm skipping all of that so let's skip them and accept the terms and condition skip this as well and with this we're now inside the android 16 rom that's just about it so first of all let's have a look at the qs styles yes this is from the android 16 that's quite great to see the transparency is somewhat on the low, higher side i have to lower the trans transparency but that not a, not a cause of any concern the settings menu is also from the android 16 once again great to see then if we have a look at the toggles and tweaks so notifications you could now see each of them have their own separate sections that's again from android 16 as well these toggles are also from android 16 the slider let me have a look at the sliders as well you know what here and the sliders are for now from android 15 it's not a cause of any concern the change will happen in the next build i suppose but all the other things are from android 16 only it's the first build and in that build also we have quite a lot of android 16 features and if we have a look at the of what we want style okay this is also up to next gen the android 16 style as you could see this is also quite nice to see even the clock style from android 16 you could see over here you could change the width of the clock from here increase or decrease it this is a, just a ui bug you could ignore that and the color of the clocks you could change that as well let's do this one this is the depth of the the dark or the light let's do a dark color for now the size you may also to large or small so let's change a color to something more meaningful the yellow color for now let's keep this one only or the orange one okay and then the style as well for now there only one clock style but in the near future we might see more clock style as well this is the clock width you may increase or, or decrease it as you could see it's getting lower and this is the most in depth one then you tap on the apply button and that's just about it the shortcut on the lock screen is also there notifications this is for the home screen in the home screen you may change the theming engine the colors switch between light and the dark theme choose any other color from here all these are a new ui from android 16 the color contrast icon shapes theme icons is there preview apply let me see if it's applied okay it's applied over here it's not shown in the app dot that's not a cause of any concern but it's shown over here and apart from that the layout let's go with 5 plus 5 which is the maximum i suppose tap on apply and it's not applied over here okay for the settings menu i don't think it's applied i don't know why that's the case it's quite a basic app again this will be rectified in the next build not a cause of any major concern likewise you also have the section of evolver wherein you will get all the tweaks for your phone it's the same the custom rom tweaks which you get always from the evolver and you could now see all of these things are over here theming style let's say spreads the theme is now changed fruit salad and apart from that notification style let's say ios style and you could now see it's now changed but there are rect rectangle but in the ios is quite rounded so it's not exactly ios let's go with default only the progress bar style you may also change all of these tweaks you are already aware of all of these more theme icons that is quite great to see background blur as well in the recent items so the blur is now there well the blur is in fact blurring the recent apps which is 
which is not what we wanted. Now it's quite fine. It's working well and good. More theme icons. Let's see. The settings icon is still like that only. So apart from that, the boot animation styles. You have okay. These are quite a lot of the Samsung mod and the Google Monet pack ROM. This was one of my best ROMs till date. It's quite a nostalgia feeling. Anyway, going back, charging animations to show a few more changes. The lock screen tweaks from here. Status bar tweaks from the sections. And replace 4G with 5G icons. 4G with LTE and so on. In the QS toggles, show animation, battery percentage. I want to change the transparency, but for now that is not there. I suppose. Power menu, advanced power menu is there. Quite great to see. And we have the option with, but where is the advanced restart? Okay, it's here only. System UI recovery and the fast boot. That's fine. And then apart from that, miscellaneous tweaks, components spoofing from here. You may keybox file. Okay, you will have to use the keybox file manually. So you could have a look at my guide or go to this guide. Get and from here, go to the comment section. Ask for the keybox file. I will give you the keybox file, and then you could easily pass the plane ticketing test without an issue whatsoever. Also enable this toggle as well. And then load the keybox XML file. You only require the keybox file if you want to pass the strong test. Most banking apps only require you to pass the basic and the device test. And for that, don't need the keybox file. If you want to pass the strong test, then only use the keybox file. Spoofed tensor features, Google app, app specific, Play Store. Okay, it will spoof it to the latest Pixel phones, the Play Store as well. But either enable the Google Photos and the Snapchat or these two because you, your phone. Cannot be spoofed to the Pixel 9 series and the Pixel 1 at the same time. In Google Photos, the phone will be Pixel XL, and in case of Google App and the Play Store, it will be on the Pixel 9 series. So keep any one of them enabled. For me, Google Photos is the more recommended one. So it's already enabled. Hide the dev status from banking and payment apps. For example, iMobile app checks for that. So you may keep it turned off from here, and they allow application downgrade as well. This is handy. Unlimited screen recording. This will also come in handy for me. And that's just about it. Apart from that, we may also go to the wallpaper style. This we have already had a look at the new Android 16 style in the display section. Brightness, extra dim, notifications, font style. There are quite a lot of fonts that you could choose from. Let's go with the Google Sans Flex. It's now changed. Then you have the icon shape as well. Let's go with iOS icons. In let's see, that is not what I was looking for. Icon shape. Let's go with the Samsung one, and this I guess should be fine with me. Yeah, it's fine for now. The signal icon style for the carrier data. I cannot see the UI of these. I have to do a manual check, which is quite a difficult task. And likewise, in the Wi-Fi icon style as well, you have to choose any one of these. For now, I guess that is in this wave. In the next build, we will get a UI for all of these as well. The navigation bar style. Let's go with the Nexus, and you could now see it's changed. It will only be there if you're using a three-button navigation style, which is quite obvious. The one UI and it's changed as well. Smallest width you may change the width as well, but it's recommended not to change it. And keep in mind the smallest width as 392 is remember that before changing it. And the color display peak refresh rate 120 hertz is fine with me. Tap to sleep on the status bar. It is working. Double tap to wake is also working well and good. Display saturation and all of these are here about focus system. In this you get the gestures which the USB gesture for all the which is there across all the Android phones, all the USB ROMs. This is also working well and good. Double tap to check phone, double tap to lift, and swipe to take a screenshot. All of them are same as across all the USB ROM. Then, if you want to do an update, you may either install from this section or you may download the zip file of the update from official site and then please do an edible side load. In case of doing an update from Android 15 to 16, in that case, although it's, you might do a dirty flash, but I have seen some issues. So, if you're doing a, a major OS upgrade from 15 to 16, then I will. Advise you to do a formatting of the phone as well. So after going to the recovery mode, first do a form phone formatting and then do an edit side of the new zip file. But if you don't want, you can skip that as well. But I have seen some issues. That is why I am advising you to do a phone formatting in case of doing an update from Android 16 beta 1 to beta 2. In that case, if you are on the same OS, then you don't have to do a phone formatting. Then you skip the phone formatting. But from Android 15 to 16, a formatting is recommended. And guys, that's just about it. On that note, we round up this video. If you have any query with regard to any of the steps, do let me know in the comment section. And thanks a lot for watching.
and the boot animation okay the easter egg is also from android 16 this has been changed long press on it and then you will get the the stars will start to spin fast and then you will get the new the control center of the spaceship over here and one the best part in this os is that you could also do an in the auto mode and it's the autopilot mode is now engaged and it will now keep on running in the back end and you could also keep a track from the notifications you could see it's now re reaching its destination will take a few more seconds and once that is done you will be notified of that as well this is quite a handy feature for me just a mere time pass but still quite great to see there have been some nifty tweaks in this as well and we are about to reach the destination in a few more seconds then let's see what happens the speed is slowing down as you could see the distance is also being less and now we have reached the destination so as you could see the flag is now over here and that's just about it